Life Audio. Christian Parent Crazy World with Catherine Seegers is brought to you by Life Audio and is part of our Faith Toolkit series. For more inspirational faith affirming podcasts, visit lifeaudio.com. Welcome to Christian Parent Crazy World, the podcast that tackles tough topics to help you be a godly parent in an ungodly world. I am your host, Katherine Seegers, and in today's episode, we will tackle this critically important question. Is it okay to question God and the Christian faith? <laughs> okay, so so if you've been listening to this podcast for any length of time, you probably already know what the answer to that question is, at least from my perspective. So you might be wondering why I'm asking it. Well, uh, you know, this is a crazy critically important issue. If we get this one wrong with our kids, it can really push them away from the faith. But but let me back up just a little bit first and put this question into context. Now, we have just finished up a series on truth here at CPCW that culminated in a very practical episode, which was the last episode that was number 29. In it, I gave you seven ways that you can challenge our culture. And I had a a corresponding article with that episode. By the way, if if you'd like to have a quick review, I'll link that for you again in the show notes, which are on Life Audio or on my website. Eventually, actually, sometimes I'm a little behind on my website. But uh, anyways, so one of those guidelines in that episode on how to be a force for good in our culture was to question everything. I've actually given you this guideline twice now. Yeah. Yeah, it was that important. I also gave it to you in episode 19. That was on how to be a countercultural Christian. And, and as I explained, that episode, number 19, was about protecting and defending our faith. So I gave you six guidelines on how to put a force field around your faith and your kids' faith in this crazy culture that we live in. Whereas episode 29 was about being proactive. It was about going on the offense and being a positive, truth-filled force for good in our culture. We really need some of those if you haven't noticed. And and you should check out both of those podcasts, though, if you didn't get a chance to. These are some of the most practical episodes that we have done here to date. So yes, I gave you this directive to question everything twice. It's, It's the only one that overlapped. Asking questions protects us. It helps us not to be deceived, to fall for the lies that our culture sells, and it protects others. It protects our kids. It helps them to think about what is really true in our culture. We need to question what we hear from our media and our leaders and our teachers and our professors, from scientists and doctors, and and what we read and see in our culture. We need to question our spiritual leaders as well. We don't need to mindlessly sit by and consume like a bunch of couch potatoes with our remote control. We need to be engaged. Does this claim line up with objective truth? Does it line up with reality? Does it line up with biology? (laughs) Does it line up with scripture? But what about questioning scripture itself? Can we do that? Can we question God You know, in the last episode, I actually had a whole section about whether we can question God and Scripture in it, but instead of including it there, I thought that this question really deserves its own podcast. Is that important? And even though you probably already know how I'm going to answer that question, if you listen to this show for any length of time, I'm still going to give you a lot of valuable information on the how and the why of questioning God and the Bible. And I'm going to start off by giving you a great example of what can happen if we approach the questioning and doubt that our kids may have the wrong way. Then, spoiler alert, I'm going to give you a couple of examples from Scripture which show the right and the wrong way to question God. Yeah. Yeah, you already knew it was okay to question God and our faith, right? (laughs) You do know that if you've been around here, but we need to know how to go about that. And then finally, we are going to wrap this puppy of a podcast up with a little homework assignment. I have never given you a homework assignment before, but I promise you, it's super easy and so necessary. Believe me, at some point in your parenting, you will need to do this homework assignment for real. And you will be so glad that you practiced it first. So glad. That's the plan for this episode of Christian Parent Crazy World. 
So let's get started. Now, I have mentioned to you before that I've started a new Christian apologetics curriculum because I just have so much free time on my hands that I just didn't know what to do with. Uh, Yeah, right. Not. Okay, so if this is your first time listening to Christian Parent Crazy World or you are fairly new around here, Christian Apologetics is the branch of study that is devoted to defending the faith. It's devoted to presenting Christianity as a rational belief system and giving people solid reasons why they should believe in God, and not just any God, the God of Scripture. Why is the Christian faith the best explanation of human nature and reality? How can I trust that Scripture is accurate and true? Does God even exist? And if so, you know, which God? These are the kinds of questions that we deal with in the field of Christian apologetics. And they are the kind of questions we deal with on this show. If we want our kids to have a solid foundation for their faith, we need to have some solid answers for these questions. So I am at Colorado Christian University at the Lee Strobel Center for Evangelism and Applied Apologetics. Woohoo! I want to give a big shout out to my classmates there who are as <laughs> bleary-eyed and stressed out as I am, I'm sure. But I think we're all loving it and we're learning so much. It's awesome. So you may have heard of Lee Strobel. He wrote the massively successful book, The Case for Christ. There's a there's a reason why <laughs> that book is so successful. It sold like over 5 million copies. That's just a few million or so more than listen to this podcast, but that's beside the point. Okay, so this book is a phenomenal account of a secular atheist's journey to Christ. I'll I'll tell you more about that in a later episode, I'm sure. Suffice to say, if you or your kids are having doubts about the authenticity of scripture, of what of what it claims about Christ, and, and can we trust the Bible, you have got to get that book. It's the perfect place to start. Strobel, by the way, was an atheist who, who happened to be an investigative journalist for the Chicago Tribune. So one day, Strobel gets this call from his wife telling him that she's got a new man in her life. Mm-hmm. Jesus. Right, yeah. <laughs> and and Strobel, naturally, as an atheist, wants to get rid of him. So he embarks on a journey to disprove the Bible. And what he ends up doing is actually just the opposite. He found out that the case for Christ is utterly and completely convincing. It's, it's logical and rational and supported by a lot of evidence. Again, that book is called The Case for Christ by Lee Strobel. Oh, and by the way, they have a children's version that is perfect for your younger kiddos. I'll link both of those for you in the notes section. Oh, oh, one more thing. They made this story into a major motion picture. Same title. I love that movie. I thought it was great. That would be an awesome movie to watch with your kids. Family family movie night. Yeah, put that one on the calendar. Okay. So, so one of our primary textbooks in this class at CCU is a little 700 pages of very light reading by Dr. Douglas Groteis. It's on Christian apologetics, a comprehensive case for biblical faith. Let's just say, uh, let's just say that this is the kind of book that does not come in a paperback. But you know, I am really enjoying it. I'm getting so much out of it. And if you are looking for a textbook on Christian apologetics, this is this is a great place to start. It's, you know, it's not densely academic and hard to follow like some of them can be. By the way, I got a copy of this book for 22 bucks off of eBay. <laughs> it's like a $50 textbook. Total score on that one. You know, I got to save money when I can because I got five mouths to feed. Well, seven actually. My husband and I like to eat occasionally too. So I've been hauling this massive volume with me to baseball tournaments and play rehearsals. Yeah, you know, that weird nerd bomb over there. And and in one of the early chapters, Dr. Groteis addressed this issue of what can happen when someone has doubts and questions God and, and they are met with the wrong response. This example is tragic. And some of you are facing a similar situation in your family. I, I, I know because you've written me and you've told me your stories. So in chapter five, Dr. Groteis tells this story. I'll just, I'll just read it to you straight from the book. He says, quote, 
Some refuse to give Christianity the time of day because they deem it anti-intellectual, a religion that values ignorance and credulity far above critical intelligence. Hmm. Ever heard that before? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Grotice goes on to say, in a book on how to leave one's religion behind, Marlene Winnell writes of a young man named Sandy who was in her religion's recovery support group. Ouch. Ouch. So sad that some people need in a group like that. Okay, so she goes on, or he goes on to say, this this young man who lost his faith in college through an encounter with an anti-intellectual pastor. The young man was experiencing doubts as a result of what he was exposed to in college. Sound familiar? Instead of addressing these questions head on, The pastor kept changing the subject. One day, when pressed by the young man, the pastor replied, Sandy, it's about time we call this what it is. Sin. (sighs) Oh, okay, okay. I just have to pause here. Questions, honest questions are not sin. Doubt is not sin. Sin. We, we don't want our kids to believe the Christian faith because we told them to or because we kept them ignorant and insisted on a mindless faith or because we couldn't answer their questions. No, no. We want them to believe what the Bible teaches because it makes sense, because it is the best explanation of reality, because it is objectively true, because it is rational and intellectually sound and satisfying in ways that other explanations just aren't. And most of all, We want them to believe because they've had a genuine experience with the living God. That's what we want. Dr. Grotice tells the end of this tale. He says, quote, The young man left the church and Christianity being unwilling to follow a religion that made thinking a sin. End quote. (sighs) Wow. Wow. A religion. That made thinking a sin. How sad is that? How many people have that perception of Christianity? You know, Sandy needs to read sermons, some sermons of the Apostle Paul. Yeah, go read Acts chapter 17, Paul's speech in Athens. It's, it's the sermon about the unknown God. Wow, it'll blow your mind. Dr. Grotice calls this sermon a masterpiece of Christian persuasion. I agree. It's brilliant. Exquisite. Paul certainly didn't conclude that thinking was a sin. Neither did Jesus. He, he was a masterful expositor of truth. He constantly confounded his opponents who were always trying to trip him up. But he, you know, he always came out on top and he made them look foolish to boot. And now there are so many brilliant defenders of the Christian faith who are doing an awful lot of sinning if thinking is a sin. Theologians and and apologists like Dr. Grotice and and Lee Strobel and N.T. Wright and William Lane Craig and Kelly James Clark and Paul Feinberg. I've been reading those guys. Stanley Gundry, love him. Oz Guinness, brilliant. And, and those who have gone before us, like like G.K. Chesterton, I've quoted him quite a bit on this show. Reading his quotes is like eating a bag of potato chips. You just can't stop. And, and of course, my favorite, C.S. Lewis, the man. Yeah, yeah, these guys are pretty, <laughs> pretty sinful of thinking is a sin. But of course, thinking isn't a sin. And you know that. And neither is questioning. Questioning is very healthy and necessary. So how do we go about questioning the Bible? How do we question God? You know, my daughter was asking me about this recently. Now, she's pretty intellectual. She's the kind of kid who reads classic literature just for fun. You know, she's really into philosophy and she she kind of had a bit of a bone to pick with God about some things in scripture. They had to do with with suffering, and she had a, honestly, she had a chip on her shoulder. And I said, okay, okay, God can handle that, but I would advise you to just simmer down a little bit and approach God humbly, not like an attorney interrogating a defendant on the witness stand. We don't want to approach God like, you know, like Tom Cruise and a few good men. Did you order the code red? Yeah, yeah, we don't want to go there. If we do, we may not be able to handle the truth. <laughs> 
Okay, did you get that there? That pun, you know, you, you can't handle the truth. Okay, never mind. Anyways, so trust me, God can handle the truth. He's the author of it. The question is, can we, if we approach God like that, we'll probably get a response straight out of Job 38. This is when God finally has it with Job and his uppity friends. And he says, oh, God, I just love this. This is so awesome. He says, who is this that obscures my plans with words without knowledge? Brace yourself like a man. I will question you and you shall answer me. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundations? Tell me, tell me if you understand. Who marked off its dimension? Surely you know. Who stretched a measuring line across it? Uh, and what for its footing set? Or, or who laid its cornerstone while the morning stars sang together? And all the angels shouted for joy. Oh, man, I I love this chapter. It's so dramatic. God really schools Job and his friends, rips them a new one, and (laughs) they can't handle the truth. They start groveling. So we want to approach God humbly. We want to teach our kids to do this as well. So there are two really great examples of this in scripture in the New Testament on how to question God. One shows us how to question God. The other shows us how not to. And I'm going to start with the not to. Okay. So Zechariah is this old guy, right? He's a priest. He doesn't have any kids. He and his wife, Elizabeth, are past the age of having children. In other words, their equipment probably doesn't work anymore, right? You know. Anyway, so they they need an act of God to have a baby. Zechariah, like I said, he's a priest, and his name is drawn to do the priestly rituals in the temple. This is like like a once in a lifetime honor. And while he is going through those those rituals in the temple, he is encountered by an angel who tells him that his barren and really old wife is going to conceive a child. And and Zechariah says, what proof is there of this? I'm an old man and my wife is is beyond her childbearing years. Now that's the the God's word translation. It really shows the attitude of Zechariah and and the question that he asked. Now check check out the message. In that version, it says, do you expect me to believe this? I'm an old man and my wife is an old woman. I love that. It's hilarious. So honest, though. And real. He didn't have the faith to believe. So God struck him dumb. He couldn't speak for like over nine months until the child was born. And finally, his mouth was open when he gave the child the name that God had told him to name the child, the name of John. Now, let's contrast that questioning with Mary in Scripture. An angel appears to Mary, a virgin, and tells her that she will conceive a child by the Holy Spirit. Now, honestly, (laughs) which is harder to believe here, an old couple having a baby or a virgin, right? I mean, old couples don't have babies often, but it does happen. It happened to me and my husband like a couple of times. I shared that testimony with you in episode 14. Had a baby at almost 46. Yeah, so it does happen. But virgins, no, Mm -mm. Mm -mm. That's only happened once, and it hadn't happened yet. (laughs) So this angel comes to Mary and tells her that she will have a baby who will be the long-awaited Messiah. Again, okay, she's a virgin, never been done before. Not only that, it's a scandal in that culture. So Mary's response is very telling. She says, she questions, but how can this be? I'm a virgin. Okay, so she's, she's curious about the logistics, really. I mean, who wouldn't be? I mean, come on. <laughs> so the angel explained that the Holy Spirit will cause her to conceive. Still pretty mysterious, right? But this, this satisfies Mary, a woman of great faith. And she responds, oh, I love this. It's so awesome. She says, behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. <sighs> wow. Wow, that is incredible. Agreeing to be an unwed mother in a culture where that could get you stoned. And I'm, I'm not talking about the high kind of stoned. I'm talking about dead stoned, okay? That is how we as believers should question God with respect, seeking truth, wondering about the logistics, the logic, the rationale. That's fine. Actually, it's not only fine, it's good. One of my favorite verses in the whole Bible is Proverbs 25, 2. 
It says, it is the glory of God to conceal a matter, to search out a matter as the glory of kings. Oh, I love that. When we search out a matter, when we ask God questions respectfully, giving him the honor that he is due, we partake in the glory of kings. We act as royalty, as sons and daughters of the Most High God. Asking questions respectfully is a very, very good thing. We want to encourage our kids to ask questions. We don't want to treat them like that that pastor treated Sandy. So with that in mind, I want to give you that homework assignment. Now, sometime really soon, when you have a couple of extra minutes, go into your bathroom and look at yourself in the mirror and imagine... Imagine that your son or daughter has has just come home and they have some very serious doubts about God and the Christian faith, or or they have some probing questions, or, or imagine that they tell you something that you never thought you would hear coming out of their mouths. Maybe maybe they're struggling with something you never thought they'd struggle with, or maybe they're embracing something you never thought they'd embrace. Maybe they've become an atheist, or I, I don't know, maybe they want to be a prostitute. Okay, maybe not that. I don't know, but just imagine for a second something shocking. Now, I'm not projecting that on you. This whole show is about how to give our kids a solid foundation for their faith. But even if our kids never question their faith, which they honestly should, we want them to, but chances are at some point your kid is going to ask or or tell you something shocking. Even if it's just a little shocking, like, you know, I got dark blue permanent ink all over my hands or I decided to wipe it off on the wall. You know, it's going to happen, okay? So go ahead and imagine that. Look at yourself in the mirror and practice keeping your jaw right where it is. Don't tense it up. Don't let it hit the ground. Don't widen your eyes. Don't look shocked, okay? Just keep breathing and looking perfectly normal. You won't be feeling normal on the inside, but on the outside, keep looking normal, okay? I'm coaching you through this, all right? And practice saying something like this, okay? Honey, thank you for asking me that, or, or thank you for telling me that. Thank you for trusting me with your doubts or your, your questions or your struggles. That took a lot of courage because you know what the Bible says and you know what I believe. So that, that must have been a really hard thing for you to admit. But let me tell you, I, I just want to be perfectly clear here. There is nothing you can struggle with, no doubts that you can have, No questions that you can raise, no choices that you can make, no philosophy or lifestyle that you can embrace, no thing that you can do in this life that is ever going to change my love for you. You can leave the faith and I'm still going to love you. You can do things that God says will harm you and I'm still going to love you because that is how God loves you. He wants to answer your questions and he wants to help you with your struggles. So do I. And I love the opportunity to find those answers with you and to help you through these things you're struggling with. God is not asking you to have a mindless faith. He welcomes your question. He's not turned off by your, your questions or your doubts or what you struggle with or what you've done. He's not disappointed in you. Neither am I. I'm very proud of you. And I believe that God has the answers you are looking for. You know, you know, something kind of like that. Make it your own, okay? It's, it's going to be your big moment to shine. You'll have that really great speech that your kids can remember forever. And whether they wander away from God for a while or whether they stay really close to the fold, and we're doing everything we can in this podcast to help our kids stay in the fold, they will know that your love for them is secure. It's it's not based on them doing everything right and believing everything right. Your love isn't about that because God's love isn't about that. And that, mamas and papas, is, is the best neon flashing sign you can give your child that points them straight to God because it is God's kindness that leads us to repentance. It's his kindness and his love God's love for your child will never die. It will chase them to the ends of the earth, and so should yours. Make sure your child knows that. 
Because you see, if if your child thinks that you are angry at them for having doubts or for struggling with something, if they think that Christianity isn't capable or willing to answer their deep probing questions, well then, you've already lost them and you'll be pushing them away. And let me just say this, if, you, if you've already done that, if, if you wish you'd heard this podcast a while ago, that's okay. It's never too late to humble yourself, to tell your child that you're sorry, that you messed up, that, that you didn't handle their questions or their struggles the right way. It's never too late to ask them to forgive you. Let me tell you, your humility will go a long way long way towards showing your your child who God really is. He's not afraid of their questions. He's not incapable of giving them satisfying answers. And he's not repulsed by their doubts or their struggles or or the fact that they sin. He remembers that we are dust. We are but dust. God loves your child and he loves you more than we can possibly know. <sighs> Okay, yeah, so let's be prepared for those tough moments in our parenting. Let's do a little homework, moms and dads. Let's be prepared with some answers or, or to help our kids find those answers. Let's be prepared to stay calm. And let's be prepared with some love and some grace. Doesn't mean we ever, ever deny what the standard is, but it does mean that we understand what the standard is there for. It's there to protect us to keep us from harming ourselves and and distancing ourselves from God and his plan for our lives. Is it okay to question God and the Christian faith? You bet it is. It's not just okay. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but to search out a matter is the glory of kings. So let's, let's search out those matters with our kids and let's keep tuning in to Christian Parent Crazy World because that's, that's what we do around here. I want to thank you for joining me today. Look, I know there are a lot of things you could be listening to right now and I really appreciate that you took this time to spend with me. I hope you will join me for my next podcast when we take aim at some aspect of our culture that threatens to derail our parenting and steal our kids' faith. If you enjoyed this episode of Christian Parent Crazy World, would you consider telling a friend and sharing it on social media and giving it a good review over on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and following me on Facebook and Instagram? Oh, oh, and maybe you could say that Christian Parent Crazy World is the best podcast you've ever heard in your entire life. uh, Just a thought. Uh, And be sure to check out my website, which is katherineseegers.com. That's Catherine with a C. I have lots of articles and resources there that will help you on your parenting journey. And if you subscribe, I will be sure to send you some really cool free stuff and notify you of future podcasts, articles, and blogs. I want to end this and every episode with a word of encouragement. God gave you your kids, your specific kids for a reason. That's because you hold the key to unlocking who God created them to be. We'll see you next time. Christian Parent Crazy World is a production of Life Audio and the Salem Web Network. To hear more from Katherine Seegers, visit her site, katherineseegers.com. If you enjoyed this episode, would you take a minute and leave us a rating and review in your podcast app? It really does help us connect to more listeners like you. A special thanks to Kelly Gibbons, Stephen Sanders, and Stephen McGarvey for their production and editing on this episode. You can find more podcasts like this over at lifeaudio.com.